name is Marina Sifas, and I'm a program director here at ARPA-E. And I'm joined by my fellow team members uh, to tell you more about ARPA-E's latest program, Harnessing Emissions into Structures, Taking Inputs from the Atmosphere, otherwise known as Hestia. And just as the Greek goddess Hestia taught the ancient Greeks how to construct their first buildings, it's the vision for the Hestia program to transform the materials and designs that we use to construct our buildings moving forward to meet our current and future climate challenges. And so with that, Elizabeth, why don't you tell us a little more about the specific type of emissions that Hestia is seeking to address? Thanks, Marina. Hestia aims to optimize the emissions efficiency and carbon storage potential of building materials and assemblies so our built environment can transition from a large carbon source to a large carbon sink. A successful Hestia project would result in building materials that store more carbon in their chemical structure than is emitted during manufacture. Put another way, stored carbon needs to be greater than the embodied carbon. Thus, Hestia would be disrupting the current trend where increasingly energy efficient advanced buildings have higher embodied emissions than less energy efficient standard buildings. Right now, advanced buildings can pay off their higher embodied emissions over time by requiring less operational energy and thus lower operational emissions each year. But as we switch to an increasingly decarbonized grid, this payoff time becomes longer and longer until building emissions are driven by the amount of embodied carbon and an increase in operational energy efficiency no longer has a carbon benefit. Thus, Hestia aims to make buildings completely carbon negative by reducing embodied emissions and increasing the carbon storage potential. Now I'll pass it along to Kirk, who will tell us how new building technologies have the potential to make our built environment part of a negative emissions solution. Thanks, Elizabeth. Across North America today, there are 630 net zero buildings under construction or development today. Net zero means the operating emissions of a building. But as Elizabeth said, this program is to focus on the embodied carbon of a building. The Hestia program, once again, is to focus on making carbon, buildings into carbon sinks. And so there are cities across North America today, such as Mexico City, LA, New York City, and Vancouver, who are focusing on programs to enable more embodied carbon into the building during construction and using different materials. Because if we were to build a building with conventional materials and operate and use that building, such as the electricity and the gas over 50 to 75 years, we would have missed a chance to impact the decade we are in now. And so when the Hestia program wants to do is research and develop new materials and new technologies that when you commission a building on day one, it begins with negative emissions. And as you operate, a, operate that building across a hundred years, you are looking at the life cycle of the entire building to be net negative. And here's Marina again to talk more about the program in detail. So as Kirk highlighted, there's a real urgency in addressing embodied emissions. And what Hestia seeks to do is really build off of a growing effort from the architecture, engineering, and construction community uh, to uh, tackle embodied emissions uh, in a similar way as uh, they have with operational emissions over the last 40 years. And in particular, um, Hestia is looking at uh, materials that are uh, derived from carbon dioxide um, and can then ultimately sequester the carbon um, such that the uh, amount of carbon um, sequestered in the material and in the product uh, is greater than the emissions to manufacture and make that material. And, and similarly, using those materials then in building designs where uh, the whole building uh, is net negative given the um, uh, carbon sequestration uh, within those materials. Um, so these materials um, can include uh, natural materials like wood that naturally uh, uh, store carbon um, to new promising uh, approaches um, that include direct uh, utilization of carbon dioxide. Um, and there are opportunities, um, not just from wood, but other uh, purpose-grown products, as well as using residues and waste from agriculture and marine. Um, and so with Hestia, um, what uh, makes it really uh, unique is uh, taking these types of materials that um, are already showing promise um, and are used in, in small quantities in um, 
building applications to really scale them in a way um, that they can meet the key performance features uh, to be taken up by the building construction uh, industry um, and to really make our buildings um, at the end of the day uh, net carbon negative. Um, and Kalina and, and Daniel are going to talk to you more about uh, the key attributes to achieving carbon negativity from a life cycle uh, perspective, um, beginning with this, the sourcing of the raw material um, all the way to the end of life of the building. Uh, so with that, Kalina is going to talk to us now uh, about the program uh, as a whole, kind of the nuts and bolts uh, and key categories that we're looking at. And we hope that uh, the successes from the Hestia program can really feed into new methods of construction uh, that are being developed um, and really contribute to uh, addressing the embodied emissions in buildings. Thanks, Marina. Three key features of the Hestia program are the consideration of carbon in building design, achieving carbon negativity on a cradle to grave basis for both the building and the building materials, and the use of robust LCA to accomplish these things. My colleagues Ian, Emily, and Daniel will discuss these in a moment. With these key components in mind, the Hestia program has two categories of focus. One is on the creation of market viable building materials that are carbon negative on a cradle to grave basis. These materials must demonstrate the ability to achieve carbon negativity while meeting performance specifications per building codes. The other category is the focus on the creation of building designs that are, that are carbon negative on a cradle to grave basis while incorporating the use of carbon negative building materials. Achieving carbon negativity on a cradle to grave basis requires consideration of the end of life of the materials in the building um, up front in, in the design process. So we're looking for building designs, materials that consider repurposing, reusing, or recycling materials up front. Robust LCA will be needed to determine the degree of carbon negativity achieved in a building material or building design. And I'll hand it off to my colleague, Daniel, to discuss this further. Thanks, Kalina. Like Kalina mentioned, LCA is a central enabler of Histia. We want to track greenhouse gases as they are captured from the environment and integrated into the building materials of the future. To really understand the value of capturing and storing those gases up front and in the materials themselves, we need expanded LCA tools that consider emissions and storage over time. For materials like wood, it's also critical that we estimate and track emissions from forestry to not only increase the accuracy of our assessments, but also to recognize suppliers that are going the extra mile in terms of sustainable production. Now I'll pass it off to Ian, who will discuss carbon as a design parameter. Thank you, Daniel. And now I'm gonna talk about another important feature of the Hestia program, which is to consider the embodied carbon and life cycle emissions associated with producing certain materials. This will hopefully give builders and architects the information upfront about the embodied carbon associated with choosing certain materials for new designs of a building. So an example of this would be to eliminate you know, the perceived green premiums that certain materials may carry. An example of this would be to have a, a deck built out of pressure treated lumber rather than the synthetic material because the pressure treated lumber is actually cheaper overall and carries a much lower life cycle emissions than the synthetic material. So this information would hopefully be presented to architects and builders up front to make better decisions overall when designing new buildings. And now I'm going to hand it off to Emily to talk about cradle and grave scenarios for the program. Thanks, Ian. The team at ARPA-E believes that developing new materials as net carbon sinks will be a critical piece to decarbonizing our building sector. A key consideration for this idea to work will be the relevant time scales that carbon can be locked into these materials. And this will be highly dependent on what happens to the material at the end of its service life, the grave step in the cradle to grave analysis. Ideally, materials that can be upcycled at, after the first service life will be preferred, both from a circular economy perspective, but also as persistent carbon sinks. However, this may not always be the case. It is here where understanding what happens to the material at the end of its service life, measuring how these processes may impact the material's ability to store carbon over time, and accounting for any unforeseen additional impacts will be essential to analyzing the material's ability 
to serve as carbon storing materials. And now I will hand it to Marina who will give concluding remarks. Thank you, Emily, and thanks to the rest of the team as well. We're really excited to seeing the outputs of the Hestia program, such that buildings are no longer part of the emissions problem, but actually part of our solution moving forward. Thank you. Thank you.